subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Hello, ninjas from around the globe. Welcome back to the podcast. You know us, Garrett is here, Matt, that's me. And we're excited to talk to you about Garrett's topic today. My topic. Garrett came up with this topic. I just want everybody to know that this topic came from Garrett Fry. Matt's concerned if it bombs, he wants nothing to do with it. It's not going to bomb. It's a great topic. And that topic is returning, and I'm using air quotes when I say that, to launching listings. We touched on this in uh, an episode just a couple few back with being a salesperson, but we want to dive deep into this. And, and I use return as air quotes because this is, should be something that we've never gotten away from. But since we have, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what constitutes a really great listing launch, the things we should be considering, and not only why is it important for the listing, Garrett, that we are putting on the market, but why is it important for our business overall? So we're going to dive into this. You guys know the drill. Head over to facebook.com slash group slash The Ninja Selling Podcast to join our amazing, thriving community of amazing people. And head over to ninjaselling.com if you want to learn anything more about ninja selling, ninja coaching, and all things ninja. So Garrett, launching the listing, the return. Returning to launching listings. Yeah. It's like the sequel. So this came out of a conversation that I was having where someone said, and I, I actually don't even remember who I was talking to about this, but they said, oh my gosh, like we're getting back now to having to launch listings again. Like I actually got a chance to launch a listing. And it's funny, I wrote it as a note and I remember I kind of ran it past Matt. And Matt's like, when did we stop? And it was kind of got me thinking about, okay, well, we, when did we stop? And it was a couple years ago, we got into a pace of a marketplace that was just like, how fast can you get it on the market? Some of you said, you know what? My system is my system. I'm never going to deviate from it. And I'm going to do all the same things I always did. That listing is going to hit the marketplace exactly the way it would have before this time. Others said, you know what? Why are we spending all this money? You don't need to do all these systems right now. We don't need to necessarily have it staged. We don't need to have professional photography. We don't need to have all these things. I'm going to save that money. I'm going to pocket it. And hey, that home is going to sell no matter what. We'll get it on the market. We'll get it sold. And even some of the really good ninjas that I know got into some bad habits around this. They may not have gone all the way to the other side and said, we're not doing anything. We're just going to throw it on the MLS and just make it be easy. But they definitely stopped doing some of the things that you would have done to launch a listing. And I'm just going to throw out some examples. Like One of the things I love when you're like launching a listing, putting one on the market, go talk to some of the neighbors of the home when you're putting it on. Like this is a simple thing that allows you to meet people in the neighborhood, set up the stage of what's going to happen, let them know they're going to see a feeding frenzy. It's going to go crazy over here, most likely. Careful how you set the stage, depending on your market. Expectations. Go back to that episode. Nobody shows up. Sweet. But you get that chance to meet all these people. That should have never stopped. Like in the craziest of crazy to wherever the marketplace is heading to, where all of a sudden we're like, oh, now I got to start doing that again. Those are some of the things like that's one example of like that should have never stopped professional staging. And we already talked about that professional staging photography. Matt, where do you want to jump in on this one? Matterport video, calling other brokers to let them know this is coming on the market within your clear cooperation timeframes and stuff. But Matt, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to do that in this marketplace. You don't not have time to do it ultimately, right? I mean, Larry says this all the time. We say this all the time. Your next listing is embedded in this listing. How people see you do business in launching that listing is going to be representative of you, of your business. If you don't take care in that listing launch, if you decide that, well, maybe we don't need this, people notice. Maybe I'm hypersensitive to this stuff, but when there's no professional photography or no floor plans or things like that, I notice very much. And in the back of my head, I go, well, that's not an agent that I'd probably want marketing my house. And that's just from a marketing side. Like, There's so much more that you do that people should be aware of. Let's not give them a reason to balk at something to then not have a conversation with you down the road. Right? That's the piece that I look at a lot is how are we using this listing opportunity to showcase 
how great of an agent that we are. And by the way, that's going to serve the client very well too. They're going to get the benefit of higher quality offers, better showings, better clarity, all of the things that are going to allow you to run a smooth transaction regardless of the marketplace. Well, and going back to what what we say in Ninja, which is your next listing is embedded in the one that you currently have right now. The interesting thing about the marketplace that we've been in is that like, as a potential seller, and I've looked at myself periodically as a potential seller. I have a home that I absolutely love. It is a project. And there's moments that I'm like, I'm done with this project. And I think I'm going to walk away from it. And we're going to go on and do something else in our life. And there's times that I'm like, I'm all in. Let's make this thing exactly the way that we've always dreamt that it could possibly be. When I have those moments of, yeah, what if? What, what if we did something different? What happens is, and I just did this recently, I went through a phase about three weeks ago where I was like, all right, I'm kind of at my wits end here. What I did is I started to go look on the MLS and I started looking at other homes that I could potentially buy. Well, what if I were to buy this house? What would that house offer me? This one has a view. This one has this. You know, This one has a bigger garage than what we currently have right now. Anybody who knows me knows that that's really important to me. All these little factors that I started looking at I also started overly critiquing and analyzing the very few properties that were available for me to look at in the parameters that I was looking at. When there's very few homes on the market, I get to look at them and go like, oh my gosh, I can't believe somebody actually put that thing on the market with all that done. I looked at one the other day and there were some rooms that were done really nice, but you could tell the homeowners were only living in two rooms. They were living in the master bedroom and and the kitchen. The rest of the house was perfectly staged. The pictures were perfectly staged. And then you all of a sudden find this bathroom that has hair dryers, curlers, straighteners, soap out on the counter, toothbrushes laying on the sink. And I'm like, out of all these photos, like, really? This is what you decided to include in this one? And there's a couple of them that just made you stop. But Garrett, if you like all the other stuff about the house, you'll still go write an offer for it. What happened is is it made me stop and look at who in the world would put a home like this on the market? Who in the world would allow this to happen? And then you start looking at some of the ones that are just spectacular. Like you look at it, the lighting is incredible. It catches your eye when you're checking it out online. And all of a sudden you might decide, okay, is this home for us? Is it not for us? But guess what? I got a home I have to sell to be able to buy one of those houses. This is your marketing piece as a listing agent. When you don't fully launch a listing and you just throw it out there, what happens is you have the general population going like, no, I'm not going to use. What a joke. I'm paying them how much commission for that? No, not happening. Yeah, I mean, which then is just a, I mean, let's raise the standards of the industry here too, people. Like if you want to, if you complain about, oh, I'm always up against commission cutters. Like, okay, well, let's step one just show your value online a little bit better there with these listings. The other benefit to Garrett to a listing launch, doing it in a certain way is it highlights you have a process. It also helps you reduce errors that can occur. It can help reduce a false start. You have a process. Hey, here are the things that we do. Because if you change something because you expect something different, if that different thing doesn't happen, now you're behind. You can still run your listing launch the way that you do it all the time and the market can move really fast and maybe things happen before you get to step six, let's say. Cool, great. Doesn't mean we should never plan for step six. Do all the things because now, one, your seller has clarity. Your business is a lot more comfortable so you can handle more of them because you have a process. Typically, I see a lot of people dismiss the listing launch when they get busy and they end up not handling more business because they're so busy trying to juggle the difference of the processes of all the different things that they're doing. Whereas people who are running 10 listings at a time, oh yeah, I do that because I have a process. Yep. Just do, 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 do. Checking things off, making sure the photographer, the Matterports, the floor plans, the floor plans, the floor plans, the copy, all of that stuff is set up to go. You can even take it to the next level too, Garrett, of doing the things like we had Dan Smith on to talk about, offer FAQs and all those things. And you can even have your set days when things go on the market, but process makes this thing run so much better, which also helps give clarity to the buying market as well. In the marketplace that we have been in, 
you made the point of, you know, if you don't follow the process, you have those moments of like, gosh, I wish we would have put it on the market in this way. But now the marketplace is telling us, yeah, 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 no, we're slapping that down. We're not going to allow that to work in this marketplace. You all of a sudden are accumulating days on market. You all of a sudden are getting weird feedback. And we're going, what happened? What happened? Oh, the marketplace is changing. Now we need to start launching the listings. If you never deviated from your plan, if you always provided that high level, you're protecting your client so that as you go, whatever marketplace happens, we have this plan that produces consistent results. I've seen it work in this really weird market over here, and I've seen it work in this market over here. Is it all necessary right now? Maybe, maybe not to get you sold. Might be, might not be. But if I do it consistently, I can produce predictable results for you. And that that goes back to what our last podcast was, which is, is this about us or is it about them? Yeah. Think of it this way too. I don't think the Ritz Carlton, let's say, you know, there's a big event going on in a city and all the hotels are booking up. I don't think the Ritz Carlton goes, well, we don't have to open the door for people today. We don't have to open the door for people this month. We don't have to iron their sheets today. I don't have to learn, you know, Mr. Fry's name as he comes through the door. I'll just sit here at the counter and go, can I help you? We don't need to be a level above. What are they going to do? They're not going to go anywhere else. They need us. They need a place to sleep. Yeah, they're still going to pay us. No, they don't. They open the door. Welcome, Mr. Fry. How may we serve you today? Are you checking in? Wonderful. We have your room ready for you. Sheets are pressed. They feel good. By the way, thanks for returning. We can see the last time you stayed with us was... Oh, wow. 16 years ago. What took you... No, just kidding. Been a rough batch. <laughs> Why do those businesses never deviate on their service? Because they know that experience is going to echo out there to either bring that client back or send another client in. And they also want to have brand integrity. And it's easier for them to run that process every time. If they have to decide when and when not they're going to open the door, it gets confusing, confuses employees, confuses the process. Don't do that to your business. Even though you may be the only person running, it's like, oh, I can handle that. Don't. No, you can't. Give yourself some clarity. It goes back to how do you create fabled service? And if you're trying to create fabled service, you have to have this process that works every single time in all aspects of your business. And Ritz Carlton's a brilliant example because anybody who stayed at a Ritz Carlton, there's two hotels I always watch when you when you bring them up to people. They go, ooh, those are nice hotels. Ritz Carlton and Four Seasons for me are the two that I can have off the top of my head that when those two hotels are mentioned, I can give you an example of staying at the Four Seasons in Vail years ago. We were up there for the, uh, uh, I think it was the 20th anniversary of Ninja. I will never forget. They're like, well, how many kids do you guys have staying with you? And I was like, oh, these are my kids. And they like totally like got to know my kids and learn their names. And they're like, oh, this is so exciting. We get up to our room and there are three tents set up in our room with stuffed animals and all kinds of goodies and all kinds of stuff. And between the time that we checked in and they noticed that we had three kids with us to the time that we got to our room, this was set and ready to go. And I'm like, and my kids came running in and they're like, this is the coolest hotel ever. And I'm like, yeah, you just created that experience for my family and my kids. And I still remember it to this day, the looks on their faces and that, that experience of going into there. They don't just do that when it's convenient and when it's the right time. They, they look for those opportunities and go, yeah, we're full. We're packed right now. Do we need to do that right now? Ah, skip it. It's not necessary. I'm not going to do it. So fabled service, I think, is if you're going to create fabled service for your clients and you're looking at this as a long-term business, no matter what the marketplace is doing, you need to always stay consistent with the services that you're providing. Yes. It's not a complicated thing. So I'll say this. If you have a process that you haven't been using, go back to your process and use it. If you don't have a process, if you're new to this industry or maybe you've been around for 30 years and you've just never been consistent, Sit down and write out what you would want the ideal experience to be if it were you selling your home. And then write out what you envision the clients, use the platinum rule of what the experience most of the sellers you work with would want that process to look like. Then look at what 
would the buyers coming into that property want that process and experience to look like? Combine all that into a listing process. I know this is a lot of work, but it's very important. And now you have your step-by-step and look at, hey, well, how much time do I need to do this? When do I need to be ordering photography? When do I need to be getting that video put together? When should I be going live on the MLS? What documents do I need to have on the MLS available to buyer's agents when we go live? What type of communication do I want to have? What type of outreach do I want to have? When am I going to go knock on the neighbor's doors? When am I? And you just have it there. And now when you have a listing launch, oh my goodness, that would be like the best week ever. Oh, I'm launching a listing. Cool. My calendar's full. I already know everything that I'm going to do this week. I got flow planned into this. I got this planned into this. Like what an easy work week. It's already there for you. So this idea of getting back to launching listings right now, take a look at your business and look at the systems that you might have let slide through the last couple of years. Things that you're like, well, we don't need to do that right now. So I'm not doing it. Or maybe I'm not doing it at the level that I used to do it back a couple of years ago. And one is I want you to say, okay, yeah, it is time to make sure that stuff is working and it's being done at a very, very, very high level. At the same time, what I want you to be thinking about is no matter what marketplace comes up in front of us, this can't drop like it did over the last couple of years. Our service and our level that we're showing up for our clients can't all of a sudden fall to a lower level. So again, this is a great opportunity to learn. It's a great opportunity to grow. It's a great opportunity to re-engage right now and just know that I I hate to say raise our game, but with listings and everything right now, there is going to be more inventory that you're in direct competition with. I am seeing a faster moving marketplace in most markets right now. So higher levels of inventory doesn't mean that the marketplace is going slower. Most markets, I'm actually seeing it moving faster with higher levels of inventory right now, but it means you have more direct competition. That means when you are putting that on, there are more homes for them to pick from. They have more directions they can take. You need to be stepping up your game right now. So there it is, man. That's where we're at. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Matt, thank you very much today for entertaining this topic. I appreciate everybody who's tuning in. If you want to go know more more about the group, Matt already told you about that. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Ninja Selling Podcast. Did I do it? You did it. Dot com? No, dot com. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. No, no. no. <laughs> Messed it up at the end. <laughs> no, dot com. <laughs> Grab that little piece at the end. Don't worry about that part. And if you want to know more about coaching, if you want to know more about installations, go to ninjaselling.com. You can check it all out there. If you want to reach out and talk to any of our coaches, uh, kind of get a sense of who they are. I've never really said this, I don't think, on the podcast, but if you want to, we call it a test drive. If you want to talk to one of our coaches and just get a sense of how that feels and how that, what that looks like, we do offer that. Totally complimentary. You can uh, talk with one of the coaches, get a sense of what that might look like in your business, and then see where it goes from there. So appreciate you all. Love to talk to you in the future. Have a great day. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.